All right, I'm gonna do a quick demonstration on how to properly stretch watercolor paper. Typically when I paint, I like using um, cotton watercolor paper. Um, my favorite brand is Arches and I like their 140 pound 300 GSM uh, white cotton watercolor paper. So I've already cut this piece down to the size that I want and then I used my T-square um, or you can just use a regular ruler if you want. And I measured in about um, a half an inch in from the edges. Um, and now the next step is that I am going to soak this paper. I am then going to uh, let it drip off a little bit and then I'm going to apply it to a nice um, hard surface. This is a piece of masonite board. And then I am going to tape it down in place with some gummed paper tape. Um, it's important to stretch your watercolor paper because if you don't, after you get it wet, the parts that you get wet will end up buckling and wrinkling. Um, it's one reason why I really enjoy using cotton watercolor paper and really thick watercolor paper is because uh, it can survive the wrinkling and the buckling a little bit better than uh, traditional uh, wood pulp papers because sometimes if I don't properly stretch it, I'll actually even take like a, a clothes iron to my uh, paintings and iron them when I'm all finished, which is a little bit embarrassing. But if you take the time to properly stretch your watercolor beforehand, then it's it's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, and you will notice a difference in your painting because you won't get all those little ridges where paint and water will pull up. So I just get this nice and wet. Some people let it sit there for like a few minutes. I'm not terribly fond of doing that because I have a feeling I would forget about it. Um, don't use hot water because you don't want it to ruin the sizing that's in the paper, which typically is a, uh, like a gelatin based chemical that uh, keeps the paper all happy and together and gives a nice surface to it to um, have paint. So this would be, another option is to purchase watercolor in block form. So you can see how this is glued around all the edges, but it's not pre-stretched. So if you soak an area of it, it will still tend to pucker and get a little bit of wavy to it because as you get it wet and move it with your brush, you're actually manipulating and stretching those fibers apart as they get wet and as the water saturates it. And you don't want that. So that's why you pre-stretch your paper. All right, so this has been in here for about two minutes since I've been talking. So I just let the water drip off an end. You can do this in your sink, bathtub. I'm just using a tray that I found that we never use anymore, a little plastic tray. I think it was like a cover for a baking pan or something for when you travel with baked goods or a lasagna or something. All right, so I let the water drip off and let me move this out of the way without spilling. Oh my gosh, I did that successfully. All right, so now I put it onto my masonite board. It's really important to have clean hands when you do this and you don't wanna poke around it a little too much. Then with a clean, damp sponge, you want to stretch the paper, okay? So we didn't just wet, wet one side, we wet both sides. And you want to push out any of the air um, or water that's trapped underneath of it. And at the same time, if you notice, I'm pushing from the center to the edges, being careful not to accidentally use that Brillo pad end. And so I'm pushing all the water out and you wanna do this carefully. You don't want to end up um, damaging the surface of your paper. Um, Cause you know, that stinks. You don't want little fuzz balls and everything popping out. So now I'm just going to take my paper tape and a little spritz bottle. I'm gonna get that wet and apply it to the edges. And you wanna make sure that you get really good adhesion to the paper. So 
you can actually take your sponge and press that down. And you want to do that to all four sides. So here's my next one. Line that up. And be really, really careful that you don't get the glue on your fingers after you get the paper tape wet and end up accidentally um, getting it on the paper itself. Actually, this looks like it needs to be stretched a little bit more in this direction. So I'm just gonna, whoop, accidentally tug the paper right out. You can rework the paper tape while it's wet, but once it dries, it's a little bit difficult to get off. Usually I end up just uh, cutting my painting out with a razor blade when I'm all finished. Because I was messing around with the edges. They buckled a little bit. Okay, so I got that there. Let me get my other bit. Okay, so I got that nice and wet. Gonna stick this edge down. Make sure I get some nice adhesion there. Okay, and oh no, I dropped my last piece on the floor somewhere. And it's always good to pre-cut your tape before you start stretching, because um, then it protects your tape. Because if you go to peel a new piece with wet fingers, <laughs> you can accidentally like drip water all over it and ruin your paper tape, and that's never very much fun. So um, you have to wait. That's the next important thing. I usually will stretch my paper a night ahead of time. And then after I stretch it, I will leave it on a flat surface. You don't want to have it tilted up or upright anyway. You just need to leave it flat. And what's going to happen is as the paper dries, it's going to shrink. But because it's taped at the edges, it won't be able to shrink completely in. So it's going to give a beautiful tension to your paper and pull it tight like a nice canvas or like the head of a snare drum. And so it's gonna be really nice and tight and wonderful to work on. Cause then when you start painting, you're not gonna get all those ripples and curves and craziness um, that's gonna cause your paint and your water to pool and uh, puddle funny on your paper. So it just helps to have a little bit more predictable surface. And one way to completely avoid having to stretch your paper is um, to invest in watercolor panels. This is a brand by Ampersand, which is called Aquaboard. And this is a Masonite panel. And it has a very, very thin layer of uh, clay on there that is very, very por uh, porous. And um, it's really nice because uh, you don't have to stretch it. It's just good to go. You just have to saturate it to get the air bubbles out of it. And then once you do that initial saturation, you're just ready to go. So I will um, eventually be doing demonstrations using both the traditional watercolor and the aqua board panels. So um, yeah, good luck prepping your paper and I look forward to painting with everyone. All right, bye.